guys, welcome back to a new video. So in today's video, we are hopping on the Honda Helix and we're gonna get it all pretty much ready to be inspected so we can take it to the DMV and get the title transferred from a salvage to a rebuild. So what I did is I went ahead and bought a full plastic fairing kit. It's not Honda OEM because Honda OEM is very expensive. Um, but I got a Japanese kind of aftermarket part from a website called WeBike. So we're going to see how all these panels fit and how everything turns out. Hopefully by the end of this video, this thing is going to be looking perfect. It is all black still, um, but I'm hoping it's going to look like the day it rolled off the Honda showroom floor. Also off camera, I went ahead and replaced the rear wheel. And I know in a previous video on this scooter, uh, the rim was bent. So I found one on eBay, got the tire swapped over to it. So it is now straight. I'll show you all that here in a little bit once we get it kind of running. And then also the windshield situation. So I talked about, sorry for all the wind guys. It's a little bit windy out here today. So hopefully it doesn't mess the audio up too bad. But uh, we talked about this scooter being a JDM build. So the plan here is to get one of those big, long, tall windscreens, which actually has already come in the mail. So that's gonna be cool. We're gonna install that today. And then also we're gonna bag it out in the rear, which we're not doing yet. And then we're also gonna be doing low ring suspension, or we're gonna do air cylinders in the front as well. I wanna be able to lay this thing literally on the ground when it's parked. But anyway, the modifications are gonna come next. So the goal of today's video is to get this thing in an OEM state so we can go ahead and get it inspected and re-registered. Without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and grab the plastic fairings and start installing them on the 2001 Honda Helix. guys so here she is my 2001 Honda Helix my first actual rebuild it's all back together and it's ready to ride let me show you around all right guys here she is totally rebuilt and pretty much ready to go now again I've talked about this before but this scooter was actually in really good shape so the reason it got totaled out was mainly because of the fairings and the fairings were dented scratched needed repair uh, I did actually find out that the rear wheel was bent, but like I mentioned earlier in this video, I did get the rear wheel uh, replaced. So I got one off of eBay, replaced it, and everything seems fine now. It's all nice and balanced, and there's no wobble, so that's great. But the plastics, the fairings, so 
The fairings are from a website called We Bike, and it is a aftermarket set of fairings, also including that rear wing that uh, didn't actually come on this model, but it's an SE wing, a special edition wing. Uh, obviously it's a replica, but it's pretty cool. It's got an LED light bar in the back, and I still need to hook that up to some source of power, but uh, it will eventually, <laughs> it'll either be a brake light or a running light, I'm not quite sure yet. But anyway, this fairing kit was pretty nice. There were a couple of issues. You can tell over here, uh, not quite painted all the way, and maybe some of these pieces used to be red at some point in time. But then on top of that too, like down here, for whatever reason, this just got missed. I mean, that's just a white strip. I guess they just didn't paint that piece. I am gonna try and get in contact with the company I got these from and see if maybe they can send me another one of those since that one wasn't fully painted from the get-go. Um, fitment was okay, it wasn't great, but I mean, that, what do you expect with an aftermarket set of fairings? Uh, I am gonna have to do some serious swirl mark removing. I uh, just guess they weren't very buffed very well from where I got them from, but color-wise, I mean, everything matches pretty good. Everything looks really good. I mean, that pretty much looks like glass. <laughs> you know, I mean, for, for what I paid for this, which I'll post on here how much the set was, it really wasn't all that much, and it came from Japan within a couple of days. So, I mean, for what I got and the money I paid, I saved a lot getting a fender kit for this instead of actually repairing all of the OEM ones. Now, at some point in time, I might repair the OEM panels, but for right now, I just want to get this thing registered and on the road and, and ready to go. So maybe we'll hit that as another project later on, but for right now, everything's great. This light was busted. I replaced it. It's an OEM replacement. The windshield, my favorite part of the whole build, is this crazy tall windshield uh, from a company called GV, or I don't know if I pronounced that right, but you can see there's the company name there. These are what all the guys in Japan run, so I, you know I had to get that. I mean, that's just, that's part of the, that's part of the build. Uh, you can tell these were original. They were a little bit damaged in the crash, but they're totally fine. I mean, the glass isn't broken in them or anything like that. So they'll do for now. I'll probably replace them with a smaller set at some point in time, but for right now, they're doing the job. These right here, these are OEM, uh, they call them boomerangs, but they're, uh, a, I guess they just give you a little bit more room for your foot and everything, but these are OEM. Brand spanking new, they're hard to come by. They're always broken, shattered, or they're a aftermarket replacement, but this thing lined up perfect. The pad runs on it just great. Yeah, man, I'm super excited with how this turned out. I mean, for my first rebuild project, I couldn't have asked for anything better. Anyway, what we're gonna do now, uh, we're gonna kind of skip forward a couple of days because I've got to get this thing inspected. Hey guys, well, <laughs> this video has kind of changed, or at least the second half of it. Uh, as you all saw in the previous part of this video, I talked about getting my motorcycle permit and also getting this scooter inspected as well as getting it registered and on the road so we could take it for its first drive. Well, uh, unfortunately, the uh, coronavirus has kind of uh, put a halt on this project. So all the county clerks and the DMVs and all that kind of stuff are closed in my area. The only way you can do stuff is through phone or online, and most of the stuff still remaining on this scooter, uh, you kind of have to do in person. So at this point, progress on this uh, scooter is kind of at a standstill, unfortunately. That kind of kills this video because I really planned on the second half of this video being the process of getting it inspected, registered, and all that good stuff, but now that doesn't seem to be the case. So I know this video is gonna be super short and the second half of this video kinda isn't gonna happen. So what I wanna do is I do wanna tackle one more lingering issue on the Helix and that has to do with the rear wheel. The issue that I'm running into is the rear wheel always spins, even when it's just idling. So this is somewhat normal when a scooter is cold. The idle tends to go a little bit higher so that it can warm up and the rear wheel kinda slowly rotates uh, as a result of that. But the issue that I'm running into is even when the scooter's cold, even when it's hot, it uh, doesn't really matter. Even if I turn the idle all the way down to where it starts bogging and wants to die, the rear wheel is spinning and forcefully spinning. So that means when I'm sitting at idle, the scooter wants to take off. So as I've been kind of driving the scooter up and down the driveway here, just kind of testing some things out, it wants to go 
without me. It wants to just go ahead and go when it's idling. So that's an issue we need to take care of because that's a safety problem. So essentially what I think is happening is I think a spring that's connected to one of the clutch pads has broken. When you rev a scooter, the belt spins faster and faster and it rotates these little, uh, I'm gonna call them like clutch pads. And once you get to a certain RPM, they start flaring out and then we'll grab the bell housing to turn the wheel. So I think one of the springs is broken and one of those pads is essentially always, uh, always trying to move that bell to rotate the wheel. So real quick, we're gonna pop off the CVT cover and see if there's anything that we can find. And then we'll probably go ahead and end this video. So let's hop onto that and see what we can find out. probably our problem. All right, guys, so really quick, I just wanted to go over, uh, I found the problem. So as you can see, all that glitter and shininess there, as well as inside this little clutch bell, uh, that's not a good sign. So essentially how this clutch works is it sits inside this bell, and as it spins faster, these clutch pads spread out, they grab onto the bell housing here, they turn that little sprocket, which in turn turns the wheel. Well, when you saw when I was disassembling, for whatever reason, uh, the spring and the clutch just came straight apart. So I have a feeling this guy that kept it all together, you can see how crazy worn out it is and, and it's all shaved down and stuff. Uh, this is our culprit, so this was loose. This uh, nut right here, its job is to keep, now granted I'm not gonna have the, hold on. So this guy's job is to keep all of this together as one unit with this spring in there as well. And this was completely loose, therefore when I undid the bolt holding the bell housing on, this thing just plopped right out, the clutch disc popped right out. So that's our problem. I don't know if this is beyond saving, I hope. I can save it, um, but it looks like it might have worn down inside there, kind of wallowed it out a little bit or something. So anyway, I'm gonna try to see if I can get this fixed and then we will touch base when I'm done with that. All right guys, now I don't suggest this, but it's I don't have a spring compressor, so I'm just gonna try to work with what I got. So we're gonna use our feet here. All right. Size is one and five eighths or a 41 millimeter socket. The, the torque specs about 60 foot pounds. So I'm just gonna try to tighten it with this. Uh, I think I could probably get 60 pretty good. <clears throat> I'd say that's 60 <laughs> at least. <laughs> and this guy to 40 foot pounds. already 40. <laughs> All right guys, let's start it up and see if everything looks like it works okay. <laughs> So 
far so good. Let's go ahead and let it warm up and then I'll give it some throttle. See if we can get the rear wheel to spin. All right guys, so I forgot I had the brake on. That's why the rear wheel wasn't mo moving. But this is 100% better. So you can see the rear wheel is just moving just a smidge. That means I know my idle is in the right spot. And if I go over here and put my hand on the wheel to stop it, it stops very easy. This is what you want when you're setting your idle. Let's give it a little bit of throttle, see what happens. Well guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, please consider pressing that thumbs up button. Also, if you wanna see more content on all my projects within the garage, consider pressing that subscribe button below to be notified when I do post content. Now, I'm not gonna get too much into this whole COVID-19 thing, but one thing that I do wanna say is I hope all of y'all are staying safe practicing social distancing, and of course washing your hands and not sticking them in your face. <laughs> this is a pretty crazy pandemic. I mean, this is something that I don't think any of us watching this video, I mean, including myself, I don't think any of us have ever experienced anything like this. It's so crazy that cities are shut down and areas are literally completely cut off from everybody else. It's, it's, it's insane, it's such a crazy, Thing to kind of go through. Of course, I don't know all of your all situations and you know how this sort of virus is affecting you all, but I do hope these videos provide a little bit of an escape, whether it's just, you know, 10 to 15 minutes of me working on this Helix or working on the Corolla, uh, just something to kind of take your mind off what's going on in today's world. It's, uh, it's a pretty scary thing and, and it's definitely a, a wake up call, especially for me. Uh, I hope you all too. I mean, things can change so quickly. Anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Please stay tuned for more Honda Helix content and content on the A86. We will be touching base on that. Actually, the next video is going to be about the A86. So we'll be hopping back on that thing, getting some real progress done so we can finally finish it and get it painted this summer. But anyway, guys, stay tuned for more garage project content. Stay safe, and until next time, I'll see you later.